Part 3, The Chasm Between. Day 5, Wednesday, June 8th. Chapter 18, Henry. Henry is an aspiring entrepreneur. During the tap-out, he's been taking care of his family's McMansion in Dove Canyon while his parents are on vacation. Henry sees a business opportunity in the 60 cases of Agua Viva his mother purchased but never bothered to sell. He's capitalizing on his neighbor's thirst by selling the alkaline-infused goji berry mineral water, earning a steep profit. Comfortable at home, Henry welcomes a classmate and sort of business nemesis, Spencer, inside. Spencer doesn't look well. Like many of their neighbors who have been drinking water from the backup well, Spencer appears weak and feverish. Henry has never trusted tap water, so he feels fine. The teens debate what Spencer will trade for a case and a half of Agua Viva. Spencer reluctantly agrees to turn over a prized possession, a signed Michael Jordan college jersey, and then guzzles a sample of water Henry provides. Noting Spencer's desperation, Henry tells him he wants a bottle of expensive scotch and an autographed football in addition to the Jordan jersey. Spencer agrees without argument. Chapter 19, Alyssa. Alyssa, Garrett, Jackie, and Kelton arrive at the Dry Fountain at the entrance of the Dove Canyon subdivision. They're able to enter because the usual security guards are absent and the gate has been dismantled. The streets are silent and the lawns are dead. The residents allegedly had water two days longer than everyone else because of the backup well, which may have made them a target for people out of their minds with thirst. Jackie promises to use the gun if necessary. Despite their hesitations, the group heads towards Alyssa and Garrett's uncle's house. Uncle Basil is surprised to see them. His sickness is obvious. His girlfriend Daphne is also ill and resting upstairs. Kelton realizes both of them likely have dysentery from the poisoned well. It's lethal and highly contagious. They have to leave immediately. The entire subdivision might be suffering the same symptoms. Jackie asks for some supplies to treat her wound and heads upstairs. Alyssa considers stealing the antibiotics from Jackie to treat her uncle. Instead, she begs Uncle Basil to leave, but he won't abandon Daphne, who is too weak to travel. Chapter 20, Jackie in the upstairs bathroom at Uncle Basil's house, Jackie finds what she needs to treat her wound and takes another round of antibiotics. As she leaves, she's drawn to an open bedroom. The room emits a foul smell, and Jackie sees Daphne in the big canopied bed. She appears dead. The smell is overpowering as Jackie gets closer to Daphne. Daphne opens her glassy eyes they don't focus on Jackie's. Death is near. Jackie realizes the situation must be the same in the surrounding houses. The subdivision is an upscale morgue. When she rejoins the group, Kelton asks Uncle Basil for his truck. He sheepishly admits he traded it to a kid up the street for some Agua Viva. The group hears a generator and blaring music as they approach Henry's house. They are forced to kick in the door when Henry refuses to hand over Uncle Basil's truck. Henry points a gun at them. In a fit of rage, Kelton restrains It turns out to be a realistic-looking toy. The group is ticked off that Henry is living in the lap of luxury while everyone else is struggling to survive. They turn on his TV and learn through CNN that the tap-out is a national story. Everyone in Southern California has been ordered to evacuate. Help is supposedly on the way. People are headed towards Lake Arrowhead and Big Bear Lake, but many aren't coming out of the woods. Kelton assures the group that he plans to take them to a different part of the forest. Chapter 21, Henry. Henry's dislocated arm pains him, and he's sobered by the news coverage of the tap out. He decides it's in his best interest to leave Dove Canyon and goes to check on his stock of Agua Viva. He realizes that his last box contains brochures, not mineral water. He tapes it shut as Alyssa walks in. He negotiates with her. 
she can have Uncle Basil's truck on the condition that the group takes him too. Alyssa agrees. Henry Viva. Jackie drives them out of the subdivision. They make small talk about the letterman's jacket Henry insists on wearing despite the 95 degree heat. It shows his last name as Roycroft. The conversation turns to family heritage. Henry chooses his words carefully. He wants the group to see him as a hero, not a threat. Snapshot one of two. CH 47D Chinook. Alice Morasco is a helicopter pilot. She's unaccustomed to flying emergency missions, but martial law has been declared. The National Guard is now in charge and has commanded her to deliver water to an official evacuation center. Alice is concerned about her uncle, who is in a nursing home in the heart of the tap out. She knows the residents of these facilities are often overlooked. She tries to catch a glimpse of his home, but is unsuccessful. She's emotional as she flies over the makeshift evacuation center where thousands wait for aid. By her calculations, at least 9 in 10 people will go without water today, despite the efforts of first responders like herself. Snapshot 2 of 2. Target. Hallie and her mom wait outside a Target, desperate for one of the seven helicopters that has flown by to land in the parking lot. They should still have the water Hallie's mom wrestled away from Alyssa at Costco four days ago. But Hallie's mom wasted it by watering houseplants and washing her hair. Hallie walks over to the shade and spots a friend named Sydney who reveals a water bottle. Hallie's sip turns into a swig. She's so thirsty. Sydney explains that she got the water from a scruffy man in a red VW van parked nearby. If Hallie is willing to spend some time alone in the van with him, she can have free water too. Hallie is horrified. But after a news helicopter flies over the lot, she decides desperate times call for desperate measures. She walks towards the van. <laughs>